What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Well, today I am at Lone Tree Cemetery located in Hayward, California. Um, unfortunately, today I had some stuff going on, so I can't go too far from home today. So I decided to stick around close to home and go to one of my local cemeteries here in Hayward, California. This cemetery is still very interesting and very beautiful. There's a section that's got newer graves, and there also is a section with old 1800s, early 1900s graves on the other side. So we're probably going to go and uh, explore the older side because, you know, that's more my thing, the older, the older stuff. Um, be forewarned, um, it is a windy day, and the mod that I got that attaches to my GoPro Hero 10 here that has the microphone deal that knocks out wind gusts, uh, when I got it, I ordered it online, I got it, I opened it up, and it was broken. So I had to send it back and reorder a new mod for my GoPro Hero 10, so be forewarned, it is, like I said, a fairly windy day, and there may be some wind kicking up. Um, but unfortunately that is beyond my control. I do apologize for that and hopefully I'll get my new mod soon and I can attach it to the camera so it doesn't matter how windy it is out. All right guys, let's go explore this cemetery right now. We're gonna start off this video over here at the uh, military section. This is an awesome section I wanna show you guys. And um, let's uh, go over here check it out as you walk in you got cannonballs lining the pathway there is the American flag and the POW MIA flag flying high today some little uh, sections here. Looks like these are uh, people who have been cremated. Very, very interesting. And it's got the different branches of the military, army, navy, air force, marines. And even the Coast Guard. And as you can see at the end here, underneath the flags, we've got cannons on either side. Here is some lights on either side, which probably looks incredible at night. Kenneth D, 1950 to 2007. And it's got different people in here. It's beautiful. It's not quite full yet, as you can see down here. E well, Robert D, 1947, 2003 in Caroline, 1940, 2016. Look at the picture. And on either side, here are the stones as well of the uh, people who were in the military. William H. Little, North Carolina, U.S. Navy, World War II, Korea, May 5th, 1911 to April 27th, 1973. Beloved wife and mother, Mary E. Little, September 13th, 1921 to June 1st, 2002.
interesting. GOW Davis, from what I can make out, this was kind of weather beat. More cannonballs. Sergeant Christian Pepe died October 7th, 1917, aged 86 years, 10 months, 7 days. Kind of a weather beaten stone again here. Well, but let's go uh, venture into the older side over here that I was talking about. This side is very, very beautiful and very, very awesome. And sorry about the wind again, guys. It's, I know it's a bad day for this, but I wanted to make some videos for you. All righty, venturing in here to this older side is very, very awesome. Right here, this little curious little structure right here. Do you guys know what this is? We've discussed this in the past. It's a small one. It's a smaller version than the ones I've shown in the past, but this again is an old receiving vault i guess it's only big enough for a couple a couple of caskets while they're building they were building back in the day these awesome awesome elaborate family crypts and mausoleums and whatnot this is where they would store the deceased until their stuff was finished they have it locked i'm sure i don't even know if they even use these anymore but it's incredibly incredibly good shape here usually when i find them they're kind of old and wrecked or or you know but this one, they, they seem to keep it up pretty nice. As you can see, it's starting to rain. <laughs> but we're gonna still gonna forge through. Uh, here is probably a hole for ventilation, I am sure. But I don't think there's anything to see in there. Ah, here we go. Here's the Fry family. Still in pretty good shape. Let's see here. Natalie Fry, December 23rd, 1854, died November 15th, 1915, native of Switzerland on the top uh, left over here. And we have um, in the back over here, it looks like these are probably cremations. There's one, two, three, four, five people back there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see the names. Martha, Victor, um, but those are probably uh, down there for the cremations. And on the top, Right, Elise Fry, September 24th, 1869. Her, she shares the same birthday with me. Not year, but the date. And July 23rd, oh boy, two July, I'm sorry, excuse me, two July 23rd, 1986. So that's a pretty recent entry here. And then John Fry, September 19th, 1892 to September 10th, 1923. But it looks like these flowers in the back here are fairly new still. So it looks like my mistake here, uh, it, it's not Natalie in the top, uh, it's Natale. And it looks like this was John Fry's father. John Fry is down here at the bottom. So this was the father of John right here, from what I'm reading, um, was born in Redwood City, San Mateo County, California. Uh, there's a little bit about the family, not a whole lot though. I mean, you know, it's, it says, uh, you know, he lived in Mount Eaton, Alameda, California, United States in 1900, and Oakland, Alameda, California, United States for about 10 years. He died on the 10th of September, 1923. But there really wasn't much more about the family than this. Sorry if those last couple of uh, scenes were zoomed in a little. I'm still getting used to the settings on this camera, and I realized it was actually zoomed all the way in. So <laughs> we'll try this again. So, J.H. Strobridge and family here. Now, over in a city not too far from here called Castro Valley, 
there is a Strobridge uh, Drive or a street. So I'm assuming that a lot of these are also founding fathers from, you know, cities uh, here in Hayward and close by as well, because that is a very familiar name. Let's go up and check it out. Beautiful. Looks like it needs a good sweep, but still very, very beautiful. So we got on the top right, Margaret died November 20th, 1840, aged 83 years. Looks like on the bottom there, we have Kate Strobridge died 9, uh, December 18th, 18, I think 85, aged 40 years. Let's look around over here. J.H. Strobridge died July 27th, 1921, aged, looks like, 84 years, possibly. 84 or 94, kind of hard to tell from here. Maybe I'll zoom in on that. And Maria died October 4th, 1891, looks like aged 48 years. And here's a closer look at J.H. Strobridge. And Maria. And Margaret, and then the bottom there looks like it's Kate. So I took to the Find a Grave app to look a little bit up more about James Harvey Strobridge here. Um, it says he was a railroad builder and the man who drove the last spike at Corinne, Utah, May 10th, 1869, inaugurating a transcontinental railroad and linking the West with the East, died at Hayward, California, aged 99. Going there from New York when he was a little more than 16 years old, Strobridge is said to have built more miles of railroad than any other man on the Pacific Coast. And it says this entry was from Railway Review, July 30th, 1921, was I guess this information was from a publication called Railway Review. So, he has built more miles of railroad than any other man on the Pacific Coast. That is his claim to fame. And these are two, but two different sides. Looks like the name is Housechild and Collins on the other side. This is a very, very beautiful structure here. Let's go look up inside this one. Glass here, beautiful. Kind of hard to see up in there. They're etched kind of lightly, it looks like. Beautiful though. Looks like a, what a BB. Unfortunately, that kind of stuff sucks, you know? That makes me angry. Inside of here, I found an Ava Housechild. She was a native of Kansas City. She lived in Sonora four months and previously lived in San Leandro for 38 years and in Hayward for 21 years. She and her husband had owned and operated Housechild's fine furniture in Hayward and Oakland. And she was a bookkeeper and furniture buyer. And she formerly belonged to the Retail Furniture Association of California. So. We go. Let's look up. Try to look up where Ava is in here. Ah, she's on the bottom here. She's on the bottom, straight ahead on the left here. And yeah, February twenty third, nineteen thirteen, to September twenty second, nineteen ninety nine. Not too long ago, she had passed. Wow, she was an interesting person here. Uh, she belonged to the Ladies Auxiliary of the Masonic Lodge in Hayward. She was 
a women's army corp veteran of World War II. Also, wow. Interesting. And this is all from the, the Modesto B uh, newspaper, September 25th, 1999. This one looks like a newer one here. Tarofsky. But you cannot see inside of this one. Unfortunately, the glass on the door is uh, frosted. I think it looks like or, or at least tinted. Interesting, on the top step here, somebody wrote hi with a smiley face in stones. Very, very cool. And it looks like we have, and these are all pretty recent entries. This thing was built not too long ago. It looks like uh, Georgina Tairovsky, April 16th, 1924 to November 16th, 2015. Admire wife, mother, grandmother, and friend. Ing Edmund, June 6th. 1921 to January 2nd, 2010. Beloved husband, father, grandfather, and friend. And then we got, our, we got a Livingston on this side, Arthur. October 6th, 1926 to May 30th, 2010. And Helen, September 8th, 1932 to May 12th, 1998. Very beautiful. And like I said, this thing is, you know, a little tinted so it's hard to see inside and another one that's a new one that is looks like it's frosted over here I looked up the family not much of anything I could find other than the last name that's on the front of this I found something interesting on this Tarofsky one um, there's actually a path that goes around back of it and I'm going to show you what they got back there. It's nothing really crazy, but it's very something I've never seen before. So I didn't notice this before. I don't know how I didn't notice it, but there's some stairs that go up the side of this one. And it's like I said, nothing crazy, but very interesting as you got on the right and left here, you got benches and here are here is the ventilation for it. They've got a ventilation here. But what's interesting here, around back, the family looks like, I don't know, either the family, maybe this is just a cemetery so they can water stuff, but they got a, a hose back here. But yeah, you can walk around this whole thing. It's like a path, very, very, very interesting. This thing takes up a lot of space here. Nice tile or nice stonework here. Now let's go venture down here. Some of these interesting graves as well. Damn, it is a cold, windy day today. I'm out here freezing my butt off. I got a jacket on too. Here's a final resting place of William Hayward. He is the founder of the town I am in, Hayward, California. And there's the uh, his name on the step. There's a plaque up in front here at the bottom. He, uh, the bust of William D. Hayward is on loan to Hayward Area Historical Society and may be seen at their museum. July 10th, 1891, age 76 years, 10 months, 10 days. An honest man is the noblest work of God. And Rachel, age 86 years, mother of Hayward. Oh, okay. Mother. Interesting. At the bottom there, there's the last name. Big, awesome stone here. And William Martin Hayward, only son of William and Rachel Hayward, died November 20th, 1893, aged 26 years, 
young, eight months and 14 days, sheltered and safe from sorrow. S. Louise Hayward, daughter of William Hayward, was born in 1838 and died in 1909. And ever thoughtful of others. And on the side over here, I noticed there's another stone. And it says, on July 10th, 1991, the city of Hayward dedicated the grave of William D. Hayward as a historic site. Well, I would certainly hope so. And it looks like originally William in 1849, he had heard news of the discovery of gold in California. So he came out here to try his hand at the gold mining boom. And he was born in Hop Hopping Hopkinton, Massachusetts, a small town northeast of Boston. So that's where he was from originally. Something else I found out about William here is that he originally, when he was a youngster, worked in a shoe factory as well, which is very, very interesting. And like I said, uh, when he heard of gold in California, he uh, got himself out here to try his hand at that. I had also read that he was also a landowner, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but yes, the namesake of Hayward, California, William D. Hayward. Walking down the hill here, I saw this interesting one. It's the Clark family, as you can see. And we got a Horace Clark, born May 11th, 1827, died June 4th, 1916. The Grace, 1884 to 1940. Mary J. 1829 to 1903. B also already was the inscription on the bottom of that. And a mini. January 25th, 1862 to March 17th, 1956. But it looks I've never seen one like this shape before. I find it very, very cool. So the rain and wind is starting to kick up. So I'm gonna get my butt out of here soon. But there's one more spot over here um, that is very, very beautiful. I will come back to this cemetery and do more. It's just the weather sucks today. And, um, and it's getting cold. And there's a beautiful niche area up here I want to show you guys. But right here I want to show you the uh, another William D. Memorial, Hayward Memorial Amphitheater here. Dedicated in 1997. I guess they could hold services in this little amphitheater, which is very interesting. I've never seen something quite like this at uh, a cemetery before. And there's the seating area. But up through here, I'm gonna show you something that's very, very uh, cool. Beautiful area, beautiful garden area here. All the cremations are in here. Usually there's water running through this. It sounds very, very awesome and peaceful, but I guess this time of year they're not running it. But here is an area for cremations. It's not very full, and it still looks like it's fairly new. We got a Kwong, Sik Kwong, December 7th, 1932 to January 25th, 2021, in loving memory. So this is a recent. But as you can see, a lot of spots here are just still vacant. It's a 
very peaceful area, very beautiful. And when that water is running in those little uh, fountains, it is very peaceful. It's interesting. Lee Margaret Donnelly, beloved wife, mother, and Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, beloved wife and mother, excuse me. August 25th, 1956 to February 13th, 2009. And it's in, in a rock, which is very interesting. I like that rock design. And family has some of these, uh, looks like decorated up for the holidays as well. But I'm definitely going to come back here on a better day, weather-wise, and do a complete and extensive explore. But yes, this is very, very beautiful. And I don't know if you could see this. This is the top of it, looking out at the cemetery on one of the sides here. And there's the row of family crypts that I was at earlier. Quack. 1940 to 2017 this bench beautiful and this stone says the original Lone Tree circa 1700 like I said they've got like different uh, you yeah. know Decorate for the holidays, which is a beautiful thing. We've got this right here. Got this little bridge you cross over when the water's running. You've got this little bridge to cross over here. Somebody has a little stocking cap on this statue. I am getting out of the weather here. Um, it, it's getting ice cold out there. Um, and um, I'm getting out. And it's starting to rain heavier too. So I got the heck out of here. Thank you all so much for joining me on this little adventure. What I'm going to do probably is um, on a nicer day uh, when it's not so rainy and nasty. Come back here and do more of a extensive, extensive um, explore. Because this place is a pretty good sized place. I know this video went on for a little while. And I just showed you a few things, but I didn't show you all of it to you. So I'll come back on a better day and do more of an explore. And thank you all so much. And I'll be talking to you later. And if you dug this video, this, this cold, rainy video, please give me a thumbs up on this video. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon. Therefore, you can be notified of all of my future uploads. Peace out, guys.